Sorry, there's no reply at the moment. And what are we going to say? Are you going to come down then tonight and see me? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? I get lots of emails and comments from people asking about discone antennas. People ask me if they're any good, whether they work, and if I'd recommend them, and my initial answer is usually no, despite owning numerous types of discones and the fact that I use them and really like them. The reason I say no to most people is because they're a jack of all trades master of non type antenna. They're extremely wide band and depending on the application, a band or frequency specific antenna will often beat the performance of a discone. So I suppose this video is going to serve as a bit of an education on discones and also a look at a really cool but unusual type of discone. They're a type of wide band antenna that's designed to operate over an extremely wide range of frequencies. You'll often see frequency ranges advertised at 0.5 to 3000 MHz, and no antenna can be truly effective over all of this portion of spectrum. They became extremely popular during the 1990s, when people realised that you could listen to all manner of things if you hooked your scanner up to one. People were using discones to receive signals as low down as CB radio on 27 MHz, right up to analog mobile phone calls in the 900 MHz, and everything in between. Discones traditionally consist of a disc shaped top element and a cone shaped bottom element, hence the name discone. Although the cone and disc are usually made up of radials for these types of antennas operating on lower frequencies. The disc portion of the antenna acts as the receiving or transmitting element for higher frequencies, while the cone element acts as a ground plane and provides coverage for lower frequencies. They're actually a variant of the biconical antenna, with one of the cones replaced by a disc. The disc should have a diameter of 0.7 times a quarter wavelength of the antenna's lowest frequency. This is located at the top of the cone, and the antenna's feed point is at the centre of this disc. The length of the cone should be a quarter wavelength of the antenna's lowest operating frequency. The angle of the cone is usually between 25 degrees and 40 degrees. There's also an insulator that acts as a separation point between the disc and the cone. They're omnidirectional, vertically polarised and have a gain similar to a dipole with a frequency ratio of 10 to 1, and their design is what gives them their wide coverage. In order to extend low frequency response, a vertical whip may be placed vertically to the disc, however this may reduce efficiency at higher frequencies. In this configuration, at lower frequencies, the disc cone may more closely resemble a ground plane antenna or a coaxial dipole. Disc cone antennas are commonly used in radio communication systems such as radio scanning, military applications, public safety systems and everything in between. These two were used for testing car phone installations back in the early 1990s and survived to this day. This one is part of a former Ofcom remote monitoring station, and this one looks like a discone, but it actually isn't. It's a brass folded monopole enclosed in a robust fiberglass cylindrical radome mounted on a skeleton ground plane made from four aluminium radial rods inclined downwards and four curved rods. These are found in aeronautical applications and are often confused with disc cones. So let's run through some advantages and disadvantages. Wideband disc cone antennas have an extremely narrow radiation pattern, which is why they can be quite sensitive to distant signals. Its omnidirectional configuration means that it can receive a wide range of signals from all directions and doesn't need to be pointed towards the source of the transmission. Fully welded disc cones are designed to survive in extreme weather conditions unlike hobby grade ones. Despite being advertised as good for transmitting, most disc cones perform better as solely receive antennas. When employed as a transmitting antenna, they're often less efficient than antennas designed for a more limited frequency range. SWR is typically around 2 to 1 over the range of the design frequency to the second harmonic, and around 3 to 1 thereafter. Because they receive signals from all directions, they'll also receive interference from all directions. And finally, they're not easy to transport when built up, as quite a lot of assembly is required. This is a rather unusual disc cone, but a disc cone all the same. 
It's made for use mainly with the Klansman PRC-344, a predominantly British military UHF Manpac transceiver, although it was used with other models. Made in the late 1970s by Siemens Plessy Defence Systems in Christchurch, England, it was widely used by the British Army and the Royal Netherlands Marine Corps. The PRC-344 is a lightweight solid-state UHF AM transceiver operating in the frequency range of 225 to 399.95 MHz with 50 kHz channel spacing giving a total of 3,500 synthesised channels. It has an output power of 2.5 watts with an operational range of greater than 160 km. It also has a built-in rescue homing beacon, remote control facilities up to 3 km using 2 core wire and rebroadcast facilities. The radio was mainly used for ground-to-air links between combat troops and their supporting ground attack aircraft and for control communications for emergency airfields and helicopter landing pads and this antenna was perfect for this application. The antenna gained the nickname Bob Marley amongst the military and amateur radio community and I can't think for the life of me why. It has a stem which supports the antenna itself on the top which screws into place using a TNC connector. The cone slides onto the connector before the stem is screwed on, pressing it between the stem and the disc. The connection to the radio is made using a simple BNC connector. These discones are a fairly rare piece of kit to obtain in good condition nowadays, but with a transmit range of 255 to 475 MHz and extremely good receive capabilities on a much wider range of frequencies, it's good for many uses. These include military airband of course, and it works exceptionally well on civil airband. It's also good for the 70cm amateur band. I actually managed to open up a repeater 60 miles away using just a handheld on this antenna from my studio at home. And it was actually quite a nice wind, but the water's really low and I just thought, I really haven't got the strength to drag my boat back up there again if I've sailed. So they've been low in the water to do some work on one. Its receive capability is much wider than its transmit capability, so it even picks up short range CB radio traffic and all manner of PMR transmissions on both VHF and UHF. I've shown you quite a few other discones so far, so let's run through them. This is the classic model you usually find outdoors on people's chimneys. It's a Skyscan V1300 full size discone and it has four separate distinctive whips to cover 25 to 1300 MHz. It's made of stainless steel and despite seeing them outside, I wouldn't personally recommend it without weatherproofing such as clear silicone sealant and regular maintenance. This is the Skyscan desktop discone which is for sitting on a desk, although a metal sheet underneath would be better. You could also put this in the loft on a metal sheet. I use mine static on the car. It has a range of 25 to 2000 MHz and is definitely not designed for permanent outdoor use. And the final model in my discone arsenal is the TX-HF6, an antenna I'll be doing a separate video on in the very near future. This covers 3 to 1000 MHz on receive, but you can also transmit on the 80 to 6 m bands with an output power of 200 watts. So, should you get a discone? If you want to listen to a wide variety of things on your scanner, then yes. If you want a discone to listen to one thing such as civil airband, CB radio or marine, then I'd avoid it and go for a band specific antenna. Either way, they're an extremely versatile antenna and well worth a look. 
mate. Are you going to come down then tonight and see me? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? And what are we going to say? Are you going to come down then tonight and see me? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? Do you love me enough to come and see me tonight? Oh, fabulous. Yeah.